There are a lot of mixed messages available on marijuana use, its harms, and legalization. Determining fact from fiction is not always easy. This video is part of an ATTC Network Coordinating Office multimedia package to provide you with straightforward, accurate information and resources from leading scientists and trusted sources to enhance how you address marijuana issues in your work. This second video of the Marijuana Lit series discusses the negative outcomes that marijuana use has on developing adolescents. I'm Carrie Franson. I'm the Associate Dean for Professional Education at the University of Colorado Skagg School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. It's estimated that about 13% of youth between 12 and 17 years of age use marijuana. Now, this has actually come down from the highs that we're seeing at the turn of the millennium, you know, around the year 2000. Um, so that's come down. But in the last few years, it's been ticking up a little bit, but not to the highs that we saw previously. For adolescents, the intoxicant of choice is still alcohol. Most, most of them use that, and sometimes in, in numbers of, um, up to like 30%. In contrast, um, marijuana is, is the second most used agent, closely followed by tobacco. And then actually another concerning uh, is the recent rise in the use of prescription medications for, for abuse purposes. As an adolescent, your limbic region reaches full development before your frontal brain does. The net effect of this is the limbic region is responsible for processing those immediate rewards and having um, impulse behavior. It's the part that, of, the, of the brain that likes to feel good. So if you're a youth, what ends up happening is, and I think anybody who's a parent probably knows this, is that teenagers wanna feel good and they don't think about the consequences. Well, it makes sense. Their prefrontal cortex has not been developed to the full capacity to go through thoughtful behavior and think about the consequences of their actions. The concern that I think most people have is because of this alteration in how neurons are developed and this relationship between the limbic part of the brain and the prefrontal part of the brain um, not being developed yet, that this leads to an abnormal circuitry in the brain and is very concerning. Um, and, and is believed to be linked to the risks of developing psychiatric disorders later on. There has been several, several studies that correlate the use of marijuana with problems in psychosis, developing schizophrenia, developing anxiety disorders, and developing depression. Now, of course, these are not cause and effects. You know, there's, no, there's never been a good randomized study that said, let's put all these people and, you know, give this half marijuana and this half not, and let's see who, who you know, cause, it's the direct cause. That study will never be done, <laughs> fortunately. But, but with the data that we have, we see a definite correlation. So when we look at the possibilities and the effects that marijuana has on certain areas of the brain and how the brain is altered um, after marijuana, it's not too surprising that we're, we're possibly creating circuitry that could lead to abnormal processing, okay? So abnormal processing like schizophrenia or depression. So um, I think everybody should be very concerned about this risk. When it comes to IQ, um, there is an, an increased risk of, of having um, a decline in cognitive function after um, the use of marijuana. And this occurs across the lifespan. It's interesting that the perception of harm by today's adolescents um, from marijuana use is actually decreasing. So currently, um, it's about 75% of youth believe there are no harmful effects from marijuana. This is a slight increase from like 70% maybe four years ago. Perhaps this is linked to the fact that we have gone through the process of legalizing recreational marijuana. We, we talk about medicinal marijuana being helpful for particular patient populations. So perhaps this links back to the increasing use by youth of marijuana because they 
hear that it's legal for recreational use, that it's possibly good for some medical disorders, they consider it safe pr um, product to use. The other thing that they're doing is they're not smoking marijuana as much anymore. They're more commonly using edibles. Part of the reason is, is because smoking causes um, a smell and it sticks to your clothes and they want to avoid that. Um, it's easier to just walk down the street, pop something in your mouth and, and have the effect occur. The, the other thing is, is when you use an edible, the concentrations of THC or the amounts of THC that are in the edible are quite high compared to taking a few hits from a, a marijuana um, cigarette. So because of that, they're actually ingesting much more THC. Initially, when somebody feels toxic, the reality is many of them actually feel quite nauseous, which is surprising because we know that when somebody uses marijuana, they can have um, um, a decreased nausea. But if they're toxic on it, they can feel more nauseous. They become very anxious. They can have what's called depersonalization, which is kind of feeling like you're outside your body. Um, this incredible anxiety that can occur is actually what typically takes people to the emergency rooms. And so when the emergency rooms see these patients, they'll have an increased heart rate, quite high. They might have an increased blood pressure. Um, these kind of psychotic or anxious-like feelings that are making them feel like they're jumping out of their skin. Unfortunately, um, the problem with that is is that's just a feeling of, of toxicity, and if possible, try to, try to avoid any further um, drug getting into the body. The, bo the stomach might be pumped um, to get rid of any existing uh, remaining drug in that area, so no more is absorbed. But otherwise, just supportive care is all that can really be done for these patients when they get to the to the emergency room. I guess when I think about kind of like what the message is for, for the youths of today, um, you know, when I was growing up, we were told we had these billions of, of neuronal cells in your brain and, and you know, if you use uh, alcohol or maybe marijuana, you're just killing off a few brain cells. It doesn't matter. You've got a million of them, a billion of them in there. And I think really our message to, to the adolescents of today really has to change and that is, is you're constantly developing your brain. You know, we used to think you killed a brain cell, it was gone, there was no way to grow others. But we're constantly making new connections and, and developing our brains as we, as we age. And so my message for, for adolescents is, don't screw that up. Don't, don't, don't try to create your own unique um, situation and, and communications between your neurons in it from a drug-induced state. Create it from your experiences. Create it from, from you know, what you learn and what you know, not from a mind-altering substance. Be sure to check out the complimentary ATTCI training, Marijuana Harmfulness to Youth Wellness, which further highlights the topics discussed in this video and other resources available. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, Marijuana, and its effects on pregnancy and newborns. If you have thoughts on this topic or would like to hear what others are saying, join the Network of Practice online discussion. Visit www.networkofpractice.org, create an account, and log on today. For more information, please visit the ATTC Network website, www.attcnetwork.org.